I know I'm getting really behind on movie reviews, but it's getting close to the end of March, and I haven't done a countdown of the best and worst of February movies, so let's try to knock that out of the way first, and let's start with the good ones. January was a pretty bad month, and I know January is normally a terrible month for movies, but there wasn't a single movie that got over three and a half stars for me. Everything was three and a half stars or lower, mostly lower. But after the end of February, there was actually five movies that I highly enjoyed to the point where they are four stars or higher. So when it comes to the top five February movies of 2019, those five are currently my favorite movies of the year at the moment. Until I go see Us, because apparently Us is really great, and I did really enjoy Get Out, so I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that Us is just as good. But I won't see that till Tuesday. Before I get into the actual five, I might as well mention a few honorable mentions. And so there was Alita, which I know a lot of people apparently really loved or really hated, and the fact that it's not on this list might get some thumbs down, because I know my review for Alita got thumbs down, even though I made very clear and very understandable reasons of why I thought it was an okay movie. But it's honorable mentions because it was good. I enjoyed it. Just not as much as the other five movies. Another honorable mention would be Isn't It Romantic, which I did love how it made fun of rom-coms. And there was some really good funny moments on the satire, but ultimately it was still okay. And the other honorable mention is Velvet Buzzsaw, which I've only seen once so far. Maybe I'll think differently when I see it again, but for the most part, I enjoyed that as well. Just, again, not enough to crack the four stars or higher, like all five of the best of February is on my list. All right, my number five is a movie that, honestly, I didn't think our theater would get. And, in fact, it was the reason why I had to put off the February best and worst list. Because on the first week of March, we got something that was supposed to be released on February, and it was a really horrible movie. And so I was like, oh, well, I have to wait for my countdown till I see that. And then on the second week of March, we got a really good movie that was supposed to come out in February. So that's why this list took a while to actually film, because I still had to see two other movies that came out late for us. And the good one, just making number five, is Arctic, which it's a survival story, really great visual storytelling. Mads Mikkelsen is amazing in the movie, good cinematography, and a YouTuber that actually made a legit movie rather than just a terrible comedy like other YouTube people that make movies. No, it was a great raw survival film and it has some emotionally devastating moments, too, which hopefully I'll get into this. Hopefully I'll actually review it because I had to put off my reviews to, just so I could see this. But I will say if you're not used to visual storytelling, if you're not used to movies where there's not a lot of dialogue and you figure out the story through visual means, then you might be bored with Arctic because I know there was one guy in our theater that talked throughout the whole movie, seemed bored as hell, complained about how there was no dialogue, complained how there was no story, even though it, you could visually, visually, visually see what was happening, how the story was progressing, how the past happened. I mean, I don't know. Some people are just not used to it, and they're just used to the story being told to you and explained to you like an idiot. Anyway, my number four is a sports drama, which I'm not a big fan of sports dramas. I don't watch sports of any kind, but this one was legitimately good, and I was surprised by it. It is Fighting With My Family. Again, I'm not... I'm not big into wrestling either, but this movie 
showed me some of the background to wrestling and how even though there are things that are faked and choreographed, they still get hurt and there's this whole hierarchy and it was actually really fun and it was more of a drama than it was a comedy, which I was surprised by. And there was two main characters in this movie, both having a character arc, which I enjoyed. Both the brother and the sister are, their, are the main characters of the film. And ultimately, I thought it was just great. And hopefully I'll get to talk about this one in a review. But this was another movie that I highly enjoyed. At least when it comes to 3, 2, and 1, I've actually reviewed all of these movies. Yeah, I definitely reviewed all these movies. My number three is Cold Pursuit. And it's not your typical Liam Neeson thriller. This is a dark comedy. It's also directed by the person who did the original, which was called In Order of Disappearance. And this not only feels like an American remake of that, but it feels like a director's cut of that. And there's better progression. There is better development in the characters. And it's a little bit more effective. And while there are things that I like more in In Order of Disappearance, overall, Cold Pursuit is a better package. And I ventured through an ice storm to see it, and I was glad to see it. This was very fun. And just like In Order of Disappearance, the story is the same, and some of the twists and turns that happen, some of how the domino effect of these character decisions and how it affects the overall story. There's a lot of pieces to be put together and it might seem like there's a lot of things that don't matter, don't matter to the overall story, but they all play some part in the story that I thought was actually really good storytelling within a satire and over the top crime drama slash thriller. Revenge Thriller. January might have brought us the worst animated film of 2019, but thankfully the end of February gave us two great animated films, both sequels to great animated films that I've loved, and my number two for February is The Lego Movie 2, the second part. Now ultimately I do love The Lego Movie a little bit more than the sequel, but I thought this was a very solid, very fun, entertaining sequel that had me smiling almost the entire way through and made me feel like a kid again. And there was just so much love when I saw this movie. There was just so much about this movie that I highly enjoyed and just had a blast watching. And other than Serenity, which is probably my favorite viewing experience because of just so, just how horribly funny the movie is, even though it wasn't supposed to be. Lego Movie 2 is probably the second most fun experience I've had in the theater. And thankfully this was a legitimate fun because it was supposed to be that way. Now originally I had the Lego Movie 2 as the number one of February, but then I saw this other one a second time and now I have to put it at the top. My number one for February is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. And yes, I've got the shirt for it. So it was astounding. And the first time I viewed it, I really enjoyed it, but I thought, oh, the Lego movie was still more entertaining. I liked it more. But then I saw it again. Uh, thankfully, I saw it again between two horrible movies because I was going to see two horrible movies in a row but then MoviePass allowed me to see How to Train Your Dragon again, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna see that, that way I can see a good movie. And seeing it a second time brought me more appreciation for the film. Granted, I still love the first one and the second one a whole lot better, but the third movie has pretty much the perfect ending for a trilogy. And I honestly don't want them to make another How to Train Your Dragon movie because the trilogy, as it stands, is a really great DreamWorks trilogy. Kung Fu Panda is also a good DreamWorks trilogy, but I think How to Train Your Dragon has them beat. Granted, 
I am a little bit more biased towards fantasy and dragons being they're my favorite mythical creature, but How to Train Your Dragon 3, really solid, very good ending. Granted, the beginning was just pretty much just really good rather than great, but again, it makes up for it in the end. So those were the top five movies of February 2019, or at least the ones that I've seen so far. What were your favorite movies of February this year? Go ahead and comment below. And if you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and check out my movie reviews or countdowns of this year, of previous years, of whatever. As always, this is Bruce Gifford, and this was just my opinion.